We recently came across three major theories about how OpenAI plans to make money in the future, and we don't think any of that is right. What's even crazier? One of these theories came directly from OpenAI's own CEO, Sam Altman. But here's the problem. Each of these ideas is essentially fighting the last war, meaning they're based on business models that worked in the past, without considering how fundamentally AI has changed the game. According to a report, OpenAI is aiming for the stars as it projects a meteoric rise in revenue, forecasting growth from $13 billion in 2025 to a whopping $125 billion by 2029. ChatGPT now boasts over 180 million monthly active users worldwide. In fact, more than 122 million daily users from students brainstorming essays to developers debugging code. But do you know running that AI genie isn't cheap? Earlier this year, Microsoft announced it's poured over $13 billion into OpenAI since 2019, and still spends billions more on cloud compute each quarter just to keep ChatGPT humming. And if that weren't dramatic enough, SoftBank just led a record-setting $40 billion funding round, valuing OpenAI at $300 billion, the largest private tech financing ever. Despite projecting $12.7 billion in revenue for 2025, OpenAI doesn't expect to break even until 2029, leaving investors on the edge of their seats. So how will this runaway AI train actually pay for itself? Some say it's all about Uber-style subsidies, or a financial crash waiting to happen, or even affiliate-style links plastered in your chat. That's a lot of noise. In the next few minutes, we'll bust the three biggest myths about OpenAI's money machine, and then reveal the multi-layered strategy that could turn this AI breakout into the next trillion-dollar success story. Ready? Let's jump in! Theory 1. OpenAI is Uber and DoorDash The first theory comes from a recent article in The Atlantic titled The Gen Z Lifestyle Subsidy. If you haven't heard this term before, it's a play on the older concept of the Millennial Lifestyle Subsidy. What was the Millennial Lifestyle Subsidy? Around 2010 to 2015, venture capital poured billions into companies like Uber, DoorDash, and Instacart. These companies deliberately operated at a loss, offering services services at artificially low prices to rapidly grow their user base. According to Business Insider, the company reported an operating profit of $1.1 billion in 2023, compared to a $1.8 billion loss in 2022. Moreover, Uber said it made a net income of $1.9 billion after losing a whopping $9.1 billion in 2022. The strategy was simple. Grow so big that you eliminate competition and own the marketplace. Once you've achieved dominance, you can raise prices and finally turn a profit. According to Forbes, Uber's average fare increased by over 83% between 2018 and 2022. DoorDash delivery fees similarly rose by 40% between 2019 and 2023, according to consumer price analysis from MarketWatch. So the theory goes, OpenAI is doing the same thing, offering ChatGPT for free or cheap as a Gen Z lifestyle subsidy, planning to eventually jack up prices once users are dependent on their services. But this comparison falls apart when you look deeper. Here's why. First, Uber and DoorDash are multi-sided marketplace businesses. According to marketplace expert and Andresen Horowitz partner Andrew Chen, these businesses benefit from network effects. They get more valuable for everyone as more users join. Uber needs both riders and drivers. More riders attract more drivers, which improves service, which attracts more riders, creating a virtuous cycle. ChatGPT is fundamentally different. The number of other people People using ChatGPT has virtually zero effect on the quality of a single user experience. This means OpenAI doesn't have the same incentive to grow at a loss that Uber and DoorDash had. Second, and this is crucial, OpenAI will never corner the market on AI models. In a 2023 analysis by Semi Analysis titled, Google, We Have No Moat and Neither Does OpenAI.
OpenAI. Researchers demonstrated how quickly competitors can catch up in the AI space. Look at how Claude from Anthropic, Gemini from Google, and Llama from Meta have all emerged as serious competitors in just the past year. If Claude suddenly becomes better than ChatGPT tomorrow, what's stopping me from switching? Maybe nothing. In other words, OpenAI isn't fighting the same war that Uber and DoorDash fought. The battlefield is completely different. Theory 2. OpenAI is a collateralized debt obligation. Our second theory comes from a recent article titled, OpenAI is a systemic risk to the tech industry. The author draws parallels between OpenAI and the 2008 financial crisis. If you need a quick refresher on what happened in 2008, one, mortgage brokers issued loans to high-risk borrowers who couldn't realistically pay their bills. Two, these subprime mortgages were then bundled into complex financial institutions instruments, called CDOs, collateralized debt obligations. Three Wall Street firms bought these CDOs, four other firms bet against these CDOs. 5. Still other firms created new CDOs from the riskiest parts of the first batch. 6. This created a dangerous loop where the gambling around mortgages far exceeded the value of the actual homes. According to Wikipedia, this resulted in $11 trillion in household wealth vanishing almost overnight when the bubble burst. So how does this relate to open AI? The article suggests the parallels to the 2007 to 2008 financial crisis are startling. Lehman Brothers wasn't the largest investment bank in the world, although it was certainly big, just like OpenAI isn't the largest tech company. Though again, it's certainly large in terms of market cap and expenditure. Lehman Brothers collapse sparked a contagion that would later spread throughout the global financial services industry and, consequently, the global economy. The author cites several concerns like, OpenAI is unprofitable. Its investors have promised $40 billion that hasn't been fully transferred. Those investors are taking on debt, and OpenAI is a major customer of Microsoft, NVIDIA, and CoreWeave. The argument is that if OpenAI collapses, it could trigger a domino effect throughout the tech industry. This comparison fundamentally misunderstands what made the 2008 crisis so catastrophic. The problem in 2008 wasn't just that companies failed, it was that bankers had created a system where the same bad loan could be bet on multiple times by multiple parties, creating an exponential risk multiplier. With OpenAI, there's no such multiplication mechanism. If OpenAI fails to pay $1 billion in bills to Microsoft and CoreWeave, those companies lose $1 billion in revenue. That's it. There's no cascade of failed bets that multiplies the damage exponentially. The worst case scenario, OpenAI goes bankrupt, its assets get sold to competitors, and the AI industry continues to advance under different leadership. It would be a headline, not a catastrophe. Theory 3. Open AI is for e-commerce. Now for perhaps the strangest theory of all, and this one came directly from OpenAI's CEO, Sam Altman himself. According to Sam Altman, OpenAI might generate revenue through affiliate fees or taking a percentage of sales generated through user searches. Let me get this straight. The company that spent billions developing some of the most advanced AI technology in human history wants to make money the same way as NerdWallet and Wirecutter? For context, affiliate marketing is a $17 billion industry according to Statista, but it's also incredibly competitive with razor-thin margins. Major players like Amazon have been steadily reducing their affiliate rates, with some categories now paying just 1-3% to commission. This is a business model where you need massive volume to make significant revenue, but it feels like a massive mismatch between the technology's potential and this monetization strategy. It seems like like they're throwing ideas at the wall to see what sticks. Which brings me to my analysis of what I think OpenAI's real business model is. The 1999 Google Playbook and OpenAI's Real Roadmap Think back to 1999, Google had a revolution in search but no business model. It wasn't until AdWords auctions launched in 2000 that Google unlocked massive profits by matching user intent with advertiser bids. Today, OpenAI sits at the same inflection point, a technological powerhouse seeking its AdWords moment. Here's the multi-layered strategy playing out now. Enterprise APIs 
API AR soared from $510 million in mid-2024 to over $1.6 billion by year-end as enterprises embed GPT into mission-critical workflows, verticalized AI subscriptions, legal GPT for law firms, MedGPT for hospitals, EduGPT for schools. Each demands fine-tuned models and domain guardrails at $50,000 plus per seat per year. The GPT Store Launched in 2024, the GPT Store lets creators sell Nesh GPTs, from personal finance bots to fantasy football coaches, at $5 to $20 per month, with OpenAI taking a 35% cut. Subscriptions, ChatGPT Plus runs at $20 per month, also an upcoming Enterprise Plus tier, $50 to $100 per user, potentially pushing subscription revenue from $8 billion. 2024, $50 billion by 2029. Autonomous Agents According to Grandview Research, the AI agents market was $5.4 billion in 2024, with a 45.8% compound annual growth rate through 2030. Piecing it all together, internal projections show OpenAI hitting $13 billion in revenue by 2025, $125 billion by 2029, and $174 billion by 2030. Even after after $200 billion in compute and talent costs, subscription and enterprise APIs each supply $40 to $50 billion, with the GPT store, ads, and agent services filling out the rest. As higher margin products scale, OpenAI could finally turn the corner on positive cash flow by 2029. So, the next time someone says OpenAI will make money like Uber, a CDO, or an affiliate site, remember, that's yesterday's playbook. If you loved this video, smash that like button, subscribe for more AI insights, and let us know in the comments which revenue stream you think will dominate.